don't actually know when you're live because it says testing your broadcast right now. So I don't know if it's actually going. We'll trust them. We'll see what's what. So these, the intros of these are probably going to be not the best. I think I can edit these afterwards. Hopefully I can. We'll see what's what. Anyway, it says I'm live now. So hopefully I'm live. How's it going, guys? Matt Massive Beer Reviews. Um, back with yet another review. A little bit of live review um, in the kind of new angle at least a new angle for uh doing these kind of live live beers and stuff like that um so i've been tinkering with a lot of things when it comes to um my setup here um at home i got a new monitor um ended up figuring out a way that i didn't know and i'm a pretty techy guy so maybe i'm just getting a little bit old for my old age uh, i figured out a way where i can actually use my iphone as my webcam so the clarity and um and uh and everything is infinitely better um here now so that's a bonus um and i'm i got like uh, my audio right i'm using a regular mic you can hear me tapping on it right now and um you're not gonna hear me sniffing as much because my camera's not right by my eyeball <laughs> and uh, a bunch of different things anyway actually figured out a way in in help with help from the guys from nerd sense um to end up figuring out how to do live shows that'll like be a little bit more interactive a way better than what Streamyard can provide um, we're going to be start doing it from here on out. So when we do like kind of a live stream when we have guests and things like that, should be a much nicer, much better experience than it has been in the past. But that is not why we're here tonight. We are here tonight because of this, which is other hat brings. It's their cabbage. Uh, yes, cabbage. I've had this beer before. I don't know if I've had it by myself. Um, in that way, like I've had it and I just chugged it on my own. Um, but I've had it at like shares or like a line share or something like that before. But I haven't had it separately. I don't believe. So we're going to dive into the sucker, see what we got. Um, it says here on the bottom, it says Flash. And that's who sent it to me. My boy uh, Flash Gordon sent this to me. Let's see if we can uh, peel this off and get an actual date. On oh, there is no date on it. He wrote 322... 20, which is, I believe, when he um, procured it. I don't actually see an actual date on this can, which is weird because I think other half dates everything. So we're going to go into this like uh, it's a fresh beer. So let's just uh, give it a pour and see what's going on here. So anyway, yeah. Oh, man, look how dirty that glass is. Jesus Christ. Can you guys see how dirty that glass is? I like rinse it out. Maybe I didn't rinse it right. Good God. We have horrible water here, so I'm sorry. Good God. I'm get a dirty glass mouth. It might be only on the outside because I had it drying upside down, so we'll see what's what. So, yeah, I don't remember. I've had a couple other half beers, but I'm not quite. I don't remember the last one I reviewed, to be honest with you. Oh, it was. Um, there is no date, though. See, uh, poetic, uh, Poetical Gore is saying dates on the bottom of the can, but there's not. There's nothing on the bottom of this can. It looks like a smudge. Maybe the dating machine got messed up and it didn't do it um yeah so is what it is uh anyway uh yeah so i mean look at that that looks like uh that looks like other half haze right there i mean just rich orange golden and glow um has that kind of just turbid kind of uh turkey gravy kind of vibes going on with it and just looks all the part of a new school kind of easy so yeah she's off to a good start let's see what she has on the old roma game anyway Hmm. I mean, she smells rich. She smells dense. You're talking about a hey, whoa, I'm dropping shit. Um. Anyway, it's a seven point nine percent imperial hazy. So you're almost getting up there in triple IPA realm. Here's the thing. It it, it has this kind of rich density to it. Um. This kind of nice kind of like uh, I don't want to say hot burn, but this nice kind of like um violent kind of greenness that isn't like super sharp it's like a rounded it's like getting a hit in the chest with a with a medicine ball as opposed to getting a hit in the chest with a dodgeball you know or something like that or a baseball is maybe a better way to put it that baseball is going to be a little bit sharper a little bit more kind of like um a pinpoint whereas you know a, a medicine ball you know what i mean is going to hit you and it's going to be a more of a thump like a, a bit heftier of a feeling and that's kind of the way the nose comes off in this one and that you're getting some rich resinousness. You're getting a greenness to it. You're getting a grapefruit kind of citrus component to it, but it's coming off as like everything's overly ripened. Everything's very fat, very heavy, very um, very dense 
very thick with five C's. Okay, we're gonna dive in. Before we dive in, let's go to comments real quick. We got a, a Cody Catton who actually said, "Man, please review this." Last night when I talked about maybe not reviewing this because I got it in a beer mill yesterday. I'm doing this because you told me to do it, brother. So this is on you, Bill Boxing. What's up? And he loves that I actually uh, uh, do my lives at the same time. I just drove three hours from Berlin to Vermont. Glad you decided to review this. Yeah, I mean, if this is a good time for you, brother, I'm glad it works for your schedule. Um, and uh, Hoffman uh, says, "Yeah, Matt." And he says, "Shout out to the Australian crew." Uh, what's going on, Australia? Uh, what time is it? Did you just wake up? That's crazy. And Dad, Dad, the beard. Not dad beard. The beard says nice color. Yum. Let's dive in. Cheers. That's another half beer right there. Um, so before um before I got into this beer, or got into the description of this, I actually said, I'm not quite sure the last time I had another half beer. I actually remember the last time I had another half beer, and that was their sixth anniversary beer. Uh, and it just kind of let me down. It really did not um, have, like, that kind of classic um, other half vibe um, that typically comes with other half beers. This tastes like other half. It has that richness, the density I was talking about, that heftiness. That's where I get the vibes I kind of get from other half beers more often than not. And it just... It has that green. It has that resinous portion of the show. It has that citrus lean grapefruit. A big peach component actually in a taste too. And, but all of them are super ripened. Super like it's a hard it, I should be able to describe these things a little bit better. But it, it has this kind of over ripened but not sw overly sweet which is typically what you get when you have an overly ripened um <laughs> Jerome, Jerome, the metronome is in the, uh, is in the, uh, <laughs> is in the chat. And Hoffman, oh, exceptional grogs. Hoffman, what's going on, homie? I know you from the Instagram. Um, anyway, it has this kind of rich, just density to it. That's absolutely fantastical. And it just it, it makes me think of other half. This is kind of how a lot of their beers kind of started to skew for me a couple years ago. Because I wasn't the biggest other half fan in the world. Uh, but up about three or three years ago, the, their beers kind of turned a corner and started to go in a specific direction. And it was this kind of direction. That's what really kind of led me to enjoy their beers uh, quite a bit more than, uh, previous. And that's a good thing. It's, it, it, listen, it drinks more like seven than eight. Um, I'm not angry at it. Usually that's kind of like. Um, that's the, uh, that's the hill I die on. That's the thing I complain about when a beer hits below its weight class. It's, 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 it's impact and it's sharpness doesn't get there, but it's density and half gets there. So I'm totally cool with the way it's playing. And it just honestly comes off as like a really just comfort beer. Like people talk about pastry shouts and they talk about all this kind of stuff. Lactose IPAs about like pastry, you think comfort food. This is like comfort beer for me. This is like. I would never be ashamed by a beer like this. Like, some people are ashamed. Be like, oh, I don't drink that kind of stuff. But they secretly do. Like, this is kind of... This is Elio's Pizza. This is McDonald's. This is fucking the Avengers. This is... You know what I mean? This is, like, shit you just enjoy for the sake of enjoyment. You're not going to sit there and dig deep. I'm probably offending fucking McDonald's geeks and superhero geeks and all that stuff. But it's something that you just enjoy. Just enjoy it. Turn your fucking brain off. Just fucking chug it. Enjoy it. It's giving you a ton of hops. It's not overly sweet. It's got sweet. It's got a, a fantastical mouthfeel that's probably a little bit too dense for a lot of people, but I think it works for this beer. Um, yeah, honestly, probably one of the more. And it's weird because if I was going to cut to the chase and start saying is it one of the better double IPAs I've had as of late, it wouldn't be towards the top, but I think it deserves to be in a specific category or, or, or like thrown in because a lot of times when I have a beer that's super interesting. I go, this might not be the best beer of this style, but it's making me think and it's got me super interested in the way it's playing. So it's one of the more interesting beers that I've had. This isn't interesting. This is very basic, um, but it basic in a way that's very, very happy. So is it one of the more viscerally enjoyable beers um, that I've had as of late? Yes. I mean, that's kind of weird to kind of create a new category on the spot, but that's what I do. And it's just a really good beer. 
I mean, it's 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 tasty AF, and pretty much. Let's put it this way: I think this is like the the Merriam-Webster dictionary of a new school turbid hazy IPA. I mean, that's kind of where this is. This is what you would see if you went in the old M. W. A Marion Webster, or if you go on Urban Dictionary, maybe that's a little bit more appropriate. Yeah, I like it. I think it's fun. Kind of perfect right now, actually, too. You know, because typically when I do these reviews, so more often than not, when I do reviews, I do three or four in a night. Because usually I do beer reviews two to three nights a week. So I give you guys about seven videos a week, sometimes more. Um, so in order to fill that quota, I do about four beers twice a week. That's eight beers and maybe one or two extra ones on another day or something like that to kind of get kind of stuff in a can. So tonight I actually did a mystery beer. It should be this sucker right here. I'm not going to tell you what it is, um, but it was quite tasty. I did a non-mystery beer of a pale ale. That is not a pale ale, so that was a dumpster fire. And then I did this, which was this, which was another beer from Flash, who sent me this one. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably the best out of the bunch. Um, I'm not going to tell you why. Um, and I think some are very close to being tied with this. It's just for some reason, viscerally, knee jerk, this one. Just kind of does me right, does me proper in this in this time and place. So yeah, absolutely fantastic beer. Let's cut to the taste. Finish this off. Is this one of the better uh, double IPAs ha I have had as of late? Like I said previously, it it's in the conversation. It's not towards the top, but as far as just pure, just you know, unadulterated. Just I'm gonna like it and not think about it. Kind of beer. It's kind of up there. It's a weird category because you'd think that would be the. The, the, the measuring stick I would use for every beer, but it's not. Um, value and availability, it's other half. It's a, a double hazy. I'm assuming it's $22 a four pack. I hate that price point, but that's what it is. And they're out of Brooklyn. You know, well, Brooklyn and Rochester, but anyway. And leave you with if you like, well, will you like this? If you like new school hazies, if you like other half, if you like hops, if you like new school hazies. How many times did I say new school hazies with, without you guys thinking I'm on repeat or something like that? Anyway. Absolutely delicious stuff. Yeah, I'm a fan. Let's put it that way. So there you go. Another review in the books. Live, mind you, nonetheless. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you're enjoying a good beer right now. Um, you know, it is uh, it is beer drinking time. It's Saturday. There's not much going on. We're whole, all, hopefully, no matter where you're located, you're social distancing, you're staying at home and enjoying good beer. So hopefully you guys are well stocked. I can see, like I said, um, you know, uh, Bill Bach actually shut up to vermont for a beer hall i assume uh to pick up a bunch of beers so that's good on him but hopefully you guys are well stocked and drinking well and there you go a little bit of live reviews i would stick around but that's not me tonight i want to go play some video games chill out have a good time so hopefully you guys enjoyed the review hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of a uh, good beer yourself if you want to check me out massive beers on the social media beer massive for the podcast and, and things comments after i stop going live if you'd like to talk further we'll see you guys next time